are some overall pricing strategies and questions? So do you start high or do you start low? Uh, In most cases, based on the competition right now uh, in February 2021, I would suggest starting low because of competition. Uh, But again, you want to look at what your appeal is. If your appeal uh, is to a mass audience, you definitely want to start low. If your appeal is to a niche art audience, higher might be where you want to go. And again, you want to establish the value. So if you're going to price your OnlyFans at $20 a month, you know, You want to make sure that in your marketing, you're letting people know this is what you're going to get and you're not going to get it anywhere else. And, you know, with that kind of appeal, you can charge a higher price because the market will allow for that price. Okay, so also in your potential customer's mind, subscriber's mind, what does high cost or low cost mean to them. So in most cases, uh, someone's high cost either means they're going to give you higher quality of product, or they're so very popular that they know that you want them, or I've said it before, you need them more than they need you. So for a lot of creators that are at a higher cost, they have been working to uh, build up this reputation and they know that they can continue to raise the price and people will continue to subscribe, you know, similar to Apple products. Uh, Now that Apple has a certain amount of status, whatever Apple charges is what Apple charges. Um, You know, it can continue to raise the price and most people will continue to to buy. There's obviously a point at which you can't raise your price so high that people will be offended by it. Obviously, there's price point t- limits for OnlyFans, you know, at $50. So, you know, at least you have that wall right there, um, that barrier. Um, but again, what $50 is going to say to someone is one of those two things. What does a low cost say to someone? Low cost says to someone either that what they're getting is mass appeal, they're not going to get any special frills. So if someone is charging $5 a month and you can tell that they have thousands of likes, they have uh, hundreds or even thousands of fans, you know you're not getting any frills with that $5. There's not going to be a lot of communication that's going to come from the creator to the subscribers. They're not going to take extra effort out of their day to do extra things. You're paying this cost for entry, and that's it. There's not going to be any any bonuses once you get in. Uh, that's what low cost says to someone. Uh, or it can also say, I'm desperate for business. It basically will say, I will do anything to drag you in right now, which again, isn't always a negative. If you're starting out and you don't have a lot going for you, uh, you don't have a lot of content out there, you don't have any status within the community or status on the site itself, it's fine to have a low cost. It's fine for people to perceive that right now, you just want them to come in. You just want them to check you out. And that's fine. But keep in mind what those concepts mean in your potential subscriber's mind. Because they have they mean something. Whatever you price your OnlyFans page at will cause an immediate perception to them. And, you know, it's important to remember the perception of value uh, versus the real value of what you produce. So when you're pricing something, it's the perception of what the person is getting more than necessarily what they're really actually getting as far as value. So what that means is is that if you can establish yourself as being important, having status, 
then you can then determine the price yourself. And then the value that they perceive will go with that. So as mentioned, if someone has status and they say you should pay $20 for this entry, then they're going to perceive that there's going there's a lot of value inside your OnlyFans. And a lot of creators will start strong and then they see that they don't necessarily have to produce as much content to continue to get a healthy amount of subscribers. And so they pull back on their amount of content, but they rarely lose the people who are subscribing because at that point, they are perceiving the value more in you as a creator than in the content that you produce. So they are into you and they are happy to see new content, but the value that they're seeing is now placed on you more than your content. And that's kind of the goal. You know, the goal is for you to have a group of fans that the content is secondary to their loyalty to you. And the price that they're paying is in their mind fine because they're loyal to you as their fan. All right. So, you know, how do you know necessarily in the very beginning how to price? Uh, It can't hurt to survey uh, people, to ask people what they would pay, especially if you're just starting out. Uh, You know, if you have fans from other platforms, feel free to just reach out and say, you know, would it be ridiculous to charge $10 to start, you know, or would it be fine? Now, of course, if you have super fans, they're going to tell you, you know, exactly what you want to hear. So just be, you know, uh, conscious of that, that someone might be blowing smoke. Uh, But so take enough, (laughs) ask enough people, uh, both, you know, who have, you know, positive and negatives to say, but it never hurts to ask, you know, and to figure out what the market will, will take. Okay, so when do you raise prices? So as mentioned, let's say you start out at $5 to drag people in. And now you're saying, okay, well, I've got 100 fans and I'm making $500 a month, but I'm putting in, you know, 30 hours a month or whatever, and I'm doing the math on that, and it's just not, it's it's not adding up for me, you know, I'm not making as much as, I, as I'd like to make. Um, how can I raise the price? So at that point, you would just estimate, I would give it several months, and I would see how many people continue to, uh, you know, renew every single month. You know, if you have a status where 90% of people are, you know, renewing or in that, that realm, 80 to 90%, I'd say it's a, it would be okay to raise prices a little bit. Uh, don't go crazy. Um, you know, don't, you know, double it overnight. Uh, you know, you might want to move from, you know, five and then, you know, to eight or seven fifty, you know, whatever's going on on the 99, 799, you know, um, you know, just let people know because you've got, let's say you have a hundred people on there, uh, you know, just make a post. It's just like, Hey guys, I'm, you know, going to be really making some more content or whatever. I hope it's okay. I'm going to, I'm going to knock the price up a little bit. You know, um, I really appreciate all of your loyalty, and just be, you know, just be upfront, like with everything else in life, be upfront with people and people, I doubt that if someone's been renewing and renewing for months, that moving up, you know, from $5 to $8 or, you know, doing like a technical 50% or 60% increase is, you know, now if you double or triple or quadruple, uh, people might, again, with the perception, they might say, okay, well, sure, what else am I getting? You know, but if you slowly increase the price, they're not going to immediately ask the question of what else am I getting? Uh, They're just going to assume that there's a natural increase. You know what I mean? Like businesses do that. Businesses will simply just, you know, cost of cost of living expense, cost of doing business expense, and they'll slowly creep up the price. But they don't they don't double or triple the price because that will scare their potential clients away. So you just want to move the price up, the needle up a little bit at a time. And that way people will be cool with 
the change. They'll say, okay, well, that this is reasonable. Um, and, you know, and then figure out whatever your healthy and you know, your healthy level is. So if you raise up to, you know, ten dollars and you've and you lose a certain percentage of people, uh, you might say, OK, well, that's that's as high as the market's allowing right now. And, you know, you might just want to keep it at that steady pace after that. I mean, you'll see from the amount of money that you're making or losing based off of increases, or, you know, decreases of price. So. Uh, when do you decrease pricing? Uh, again, if the market is saying, uh, like for instance, if you competitor, if competitors come into the market and they are bringing the price down, and you're now the highest priced person, uh, you might consider lowering your prices. I don't think there's ever a really good time, uh, or you know, to lower prices unless you've lost you know, 50% of your subscribers over to somebody else. I don't think at, at a point, like if you're charging $10 a month, it's the price is really what's going to be the issue. Um, I would uh, look at the content that you're producing to make sure that you've kept up, that that you're, comp- you're doing a better job than your competitors. But there's rarely a case where I would lower th- the cost uh, because you can always do more to keep your cost at that level, especially if you're more of a niche person. Um, And even if you aren't, if you've set that price uh, at, you know, whatever that level is, and you start to lose a lot of, of clients or subscribers, again, I would work harder on the content that you produce uh, because that's going to help you more than lowering the cost. Okay. Well, that was an overview of pricing your OnlyFans page correctly. Uh, again, my name is Richard Lewis. I am the founder of OnlyFans Hero and an upcoming platform called Stripper.Fan. You can find us on Instagram uh, OnlyFa- at OnlyFans uh, Secrets Podcast. Also on our Reddit group. Uh, if you're on Reddit, please join us over there, r slash OnlyFans Secrets. It is a marketing community and growing every day. And you can also find us on OnlyFans itself at OnlyFans.com slash OnlyFans Hero. Please subscribe for free over there and we'll give you updates on the latest podcast episodes. And as always, uh, follow us on Twitter at OnlyFans Hero, a very popular uh, promo. We run free promos every single day. Please jump on there and promo yourself as a creator. It's all free and uh, very popular. And also reach out at OnlyFans Hero directly to me and about any episode ideas you have, any questions about the podcast, or just general questions about OnlyFans itself. And as always, I really appreciate you guys listening to this podcast, supporting this podcast. Uh, Please continue to do so. Please continue to subscribe and follow and listen. All right. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Morty, Morty, Morty.